Next is from Yumi Matsumoto, and this up is Crabs in a Bucket. Hello, K100. Now that John Laurinaitis has declared himself a victim, do you think that means he's going to sing like a canary and do some snitching? Because if he does, who knows what other crazy stories are come out. No pun intended. Personally, I really doubt he's a victim. But who knows what some people do to take the blame off themselves. It's like the crabs in a bucket theory, or even Nino Brown from the movie New York, New Jack City. Quote, if I'm going down, I'm taking a whole lot of people with me, unquote. All I can say is get the popcorn ready. This might get interesting. Thanks, and Yumi Matsumoto. Oh, you think it's going to get interesting? Well, something already kind of dropped today. I don't know what? if you guys saw it, but... So, Ashley Mazzaro, uh, she died a few years ago. She was a WWE guy. You guys know right. who it is, but I'm just saying for the listeners. Like, she wasn't around that long, but... Right. Um, she had uh, alleged that she was... Yeah, Kuwaiti. in the Middle East. was Kuwait or Iraq or in the Middle East, yeah. And... uh and WWE like had her put a lid on it and stuff like that. And and then later on in a statement, Vince and the company said, no, we didn't know that. That never happened. We never heard of that. And now uh, Johnny's lawyer is saying, yeah, Vince knew about that. And so did Johnny. Right. So that's the first thing that came out really. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, well, how, how is Johnny the victim? If they're like, Hey, you want to like, uh, not sure how he's the victim there, unless he ordered him to. Okay. Well, listen, here's the thing. It's like, who are the bad guys there? Right. Like, if usually the bad guys go down, and it looks like Vince was a bad guy, it looks like Johnny John Laurinaitis was a bad guy. However, we like I said, dude, people are sitting there making, you know, doing you know hours upon hours of, of speculation on this topic, right? And I'm just like, you know, I'm. But I'm, there's one important thing, Disco. Johnny's what? already spoken out, which means something. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, his lawyer spoke out. Okay, right. right. But, but he, what's he going to do? He's like, you know, he's being accused. Right. So and and the Justice Department is looking into Vince now because of this stuff, right? You're, yeah. They're trying the to federal unearth government, bro. Right, but but then th- the thing is, is like, dude, it's like, okay, you know, the, the, like me and Russo were talking about this in detail today, and you know, like this is like a, the, the fact that everybody, you know, needs to know, bro. Nobody would have known about any of this if one of the NDAs had not been broken. You know, Vince stopped paying. Like, in the, I was wondering, like, we, you know, like, Vince well, the fact that nobody been, wouldn't let, have let, known let, about let, it let me doesn't finish make it fact, right. Let me finish this fact towards you, right? <laughs> let me finish this fact towards you. So, the thing was, is Vince, like, knew that this chick would sue him if he broke the NDA. Right. He still stopped paying her with knowing, okay, I can get sued by, you know, I'm not afraid of getting sued by this girl, which is what it looks like. First thing that you know, because the, the, bro, there's no dis, no discovery. We don't. I don't know. All we know is we seen some text messages, completely out of context. Because I'm sure Vince and this girl have tons of text messages in between each other. They had a relationship, and we haven't seen anything that makes her look bad, right? Not nothing. We haven't seen Vince say like nothing yet, right? We haven't seen text messages with John Laurinaitis and then Vince and stuff. And like we hear words like, and then your wonder is like. Yo, these are illegal activities. Why is she, you know, civilly suing him before the, the criminal complaint? Now, unless down? this because is, you unless, know, if he gets accused of the criminal complaint, the civil complaint is a slam dunk. Right. But what so, if it's like, you know, you don't say that's okay. Go ahead. So unless, um, you talk so much, I forget. Unless Johnny's using this as a legal strategy. Yeah. I'm he's sure. already come out against Vince. Right. You know, with that statement, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. plus direct, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, bro, I just find like doesn't, that every, doesn't, I, I, I don't know who's doing all this stuff against their will. This will all come right. out discovery stuff, but this is like, right. this sounds like a relationship. You know what I'm right. saying? So we would mm-hmm. use the words. So I'm like, you know, well, those I'm, are great you know, buzzwords. Right. You know that. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. You know, if yeah. We'll see. Did you, did you okay, know? So, uh, and did you see uh, Di and Conan? You'll, you'll recognize the name just from this show. But Brad Shepard's name came up in the Vince stuff. Who? Oh, that Shepard they like that dirt cheek. Wait guy? a minute. How to, yeah, how to hit yeah, him? yeah. No, let me hear. So, no, no, let me hear this. I, I, I know so this guy, his, You don't know him, so, Conan. I do. But wait, 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 wait. As a matter yeah. of fact, I think I do. Isn't that this? I don't know him, but isn't this the guy that Billy Body was getting information yes. from? Yeah, it's about this. They're oh, they're God. they're buddies and all that. Yeah. So um. And Brad was very upset that you didn't know who he was, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Why would I know who he is? <laughs> We've never um, met. But We've Brad, never met. Who is yeah. he? Like, yeah. Okay. He's like a wrestling guy. Um, right. So he he actually knew the girl Grant's name last summer 
and tweeted it and people were pretty disgusted. So he's, he was named because, uh, in the, in the suit and everything, it doesn't say Brad Shepard, but it says, uh, online sources already, you know, had my client's name out there. That's because of Shepard. Shepard's the one that leaked her name last summer. Well, everybody obviously knew who this girl was. She worked there. Yeah. This isn't like a, like a, a random person. They gave her a job at WWE. Everybody at WWE obviously knew who this chick was. Yeah, but the idea you know? <laughs> being if there's if there's an NDA and no one's supposed to talk about it, somebody gave her name to Brad or Brad found it out somehow, you know? So, yeah, right. Yeah. So, That's why I always say the best thing about NDAs is what if somebody, you know. Whoopsie. Right. right. <clears throat> okay, next, next is from William Alina Jr. So is Brock Lesnar being removed from WWE? Is John Laurinaitis a victim? Hello, K100 crew. It appears WWE might conclude their partnership with Brock Lesnar, evidenced by the discounting of his merchandise and exclusion from upcoming events. A development I find disappointing as a fan. In light of this, I have two questions. Given WWE's handling of the situation involving Brock Lesnar, particularly with his name being implicated in a lawsuit, does this suggest he's as culpable as Vince McMahon, or is he merely being mentioned without direct involvement? Regarding John Laurinaitis, is he genuinely a victim in this scenario, or is there more to consider regarding his role in this matter because this is not the first time his name has been involved in something of this nature? Could you provide insights into John Lawrence Nidus' tenure in WCW? Um, well, let's start the last one. His tenure in WCW, I, mean, I was not a fan of his because he, would, he, was, he was not an honest guy. He would say things to my face and things behind my back. Okay, so, I, right, that, so that was a character flaw. Add, that, okay, go ahead. You can say something. Let me add to that. that. He was, A, not universally li- liked, 100%, mm-hmm. disingenuous, right, and a lot of hubris. Right. You know, uh, yeah. I can imagine so, from, from just and obviously you guys would be able to tell me, but from a talent standpoint, you guys were there the whole run from 96, early 96 on disco earlier than that. Johnny didn't come in till the end of 2000. And then there's the sale in March 2001. All of a sudden, Johnny's in charge of everyone. You know, it's like, where did this guy come from. He hasn't been well, here with us. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you what the TKO is very is excellent at. OK, is they, you know, they were. Okay, before they became Tico, they were, well, this was this was the, the previous. Uh, this was William Morris Talent Agency. Mm-hmm. They were talent agency, like 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 creative like CAA, like Creative Arts Agency, right. and you know these mega things. So what they have, what what this company is, are agents of massive amounts of people in the entertainment industry. So the one thing that this company knows very well how to do is navigate through stress to to their clients. Okay. And what they did with the like perfect example with Brock Lesnar here, this is pretty simplistic. The WWE has has the tenth, like bro, their social media imprint is is massive. Okay, so what you have to do in situations like this because you know this massive audience to prevent the mob from coming after you, you know, out of the, this pool of like like uh, you know social media you know followers you have, you just have to remove them out of the picture and get them get just 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 a you know Vince, you're done, you're gone. Brock Lester gone. All right, it's not our problem anymore. Like they're gone. They're, you, you guys want to complain about, but they're they're not here right now. And that's what. And the, bro, they have they have been navigating this well they because have. nobody's really like looking at TKO and going, "Oh, you people are horrific and yeah. terrible." They're like they're navigating the situation because they were they were a talent agency, so they they know what to do here. And I'm just going to trust them to navigate their way through this. To basically, as wrestling fans. We're not steered towards the wrong conversation and still stay, stay cool to the product and just, just enjoy the product as fans, right? And that's what they're doing well. I, I, I got to give them some credit, but that's, that's what they are. They're a talent agency, you know? And plus two, I was talking to Vince, and uh, one of the things that they're looking, looking forward to doing going forward is, you know, th- because they have a massive pool of talent, is taking people from the entertainment industry or UFC fighters and integrating them into this product. Like you know, you you're gonna see Conor McGregor doing something on this show, you know. You're gonna see Eventually, like yes. like absolutely, and then like because bro, that they what they have now is the WWE is one of the more massive televised platforms because they're on every single week, and you have a talent agency, this company that has all these people that you can integrate on that platform, and that that's what they're probably gonna be doing going forward. It's gonna really change the the look of like how WWE does business and they're going to, they're, you know, wrestling fans are just going to like, they're going to get mad. You know, you know, why, why are these outsiders coming in and do a bit? Say, well, because they're, they're more popular than the wrestlers on the roster. You know, <laughs> they say, we're trying to do business globally. And that's like, but not only that, you got to right, imagine yeah. Glenn, how many people saw bad bunny and Logan Paul right. and, and they're like, Hey, I wouldn't mind taking a stab at that or look, saying, I don't want to wrestle. 
but I'll be a manager like O'Shea Jackson would be a good manager. Let, let me give you another perfect example. Okay. You could take, there's guys like, um, uh, like, like AJ Francis, perfect example. Like AJ right. Francis became a professional wrestler, but he was like, like I talked to him, like, you know, like when we were saying, Hey, were you one of those guys that used to play around and wrestle when you were with the football guys? Like, yeah, a bunch of us used to do it. We do RKOs out of nowhere and stuff. So, so with this talent agency with TKO, and you have all these people, bro. You 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 take people and you see how quickly they can pick the wrestling up. Like Logan Paul obviously picked up very fast. Bad Bunny picked up very fast. If you get a guy that maybe McAfee. you might want to do, McAfee picked up very fast. But I'm sure there's guys that you you're like you're looking at them trying it, and you're like these guys aren't going to get it. Yeah, we've like, seen like them. They're, they're gonna have to put way too much effort. Mongo McMichael. Right, oh, exactly. So but they there's probably enough of them out there. Bro, like I said, I I I train like guys like Stephen Bonner and stuff. You know, I I've taken non professional wrestling people and trained them pretty quickly to do professional wrestling. You got great trainers that are like Shane Helms and like Shane's been the guy working with Logan. You know, look at the job that he's done with that guy. You know, so, so you have the best trainers in the world. You know that to to train people to do this, and we'll we'll see this going forward. You know, so yeah, it's just gonna be even, it's, the company's gonna get even more popular than it already is. Is is what I'm looking at here. Uh, Jessica, do, do me a favor. Now, um, go ahead. Now, I'll ask you after the after the email. Okay, next one's from Fat Factor. Oh, no, okay, so if we're, if we're going to the next email, I'll ask you now. Then can you check your uh, sound <clears throat> and see if you can turn your mic down because oh, when you get a little louder, I, I kind of can probably hear it too on our end. You crackle a little. Okay. So it's it's probably your mic okay, volume's oh, too high. I got it near my mouth. That's why. Right there. How's that? Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, because um, I'm right next to my mouth. I think, so. Yeah. Um, you're good. All right. So next is from Fat Factor. And the question is uh, Johnny Ace's seemingly bizarre response. Dear Kaylin Hunter, hope you guys are well. And congratulations to Joe for finally removing the glue that was keeping the shade stuck to his head. Well, they're back. Yeah. Uh, and if you, you could take the glue John from Lord the hat, response? too. <laughs> what you think of John Lorenzo's response to Vince McMahon allegations and the seemingly bizarre defense he claimed in the state that he was a victim just like Jamil Grant? Do you think there might be anything to this? And do you think Lorenzo, who's by most accounts a known snake, will end up testifying against Vince? P.S. I noticed that when Joe doesn't have his shades on, <clears throat> sorry, he looks like former F1 champ Nigel Mansell, who was actually one of the biggest Ooh. badasses in the sport. Nigel Mansell, there's a picture here. You see the picture below, which now means that Joe has to dress up like Nigel Mansell. For that other show's Halloween special, that guy looks like. How does that guy look like Joe? Joe, put this picture up. What? He says Is that, that the like right Joe. picture. Yeah, should we suspend this guy? One hundred percent. That, looks nothing like that, that guy yeah. is ro rocking a nineteen eighties Joe Feeney mustache, though. My dad definitely had one of those. Okay, well, let's just fat factor suspend him. Well, he doesn't look like <laughs> you or your card. dad. So. Yellow card, <laughs> yeah. but, yellow card for misinformation, but he's been suspended for four. So I think so. Let's suspend him. Suspended fat factor. Information on that. that does not look like Joe at all. Nothing. Yeah, brutal. Okay, next one's from um, Jared Aviat. Subject to Devon Eric's. Hi, K100 fam. Hope all is well. Just curious if you've watched Devon Eric's film, The Iron Claws, of yet. Probably Disco did not. I get it. You're correct. I thought it was done with a lot of reverence, despite not including Chris at all in the story. The themes that kept coming up was the boys wanted to impress Fritz, and Fritz desired to have the world title and the family at all costs. I just wonder if you guys saw similar themes with other second or third generation guys in business, and did you see strained father and son relationships? Thank you, the best, Jared. Um, not really. Like even David Flair and Rick got along in front of us. I, I don't. I didn't really see any. Like, how many second generation relationships were there? Du uh, well, you, D Dustin was gone. I was gonna say Dusty and Dustin. Yeah, he was gone. Yeah, but he uh, the, the guy was saying oh, something gone. like. The, the the bullet they loved his dad they loved their dad. oh no no no, no. And, but there, but but the guy saying that they try to impress their dad and to me it's like uh what son doesn't want to impress their dad dude right. especially in wrestling you know right plus two I, I used to like how the Armstrongs always refer to their dad as bullet yeah <laughs> bullet okay, next is from Jose Sanchez but you know what's really yeah. funny when you meet wrestler sons mm -hmm. right like you know. Well, usually, bro, and I would say the majority of the times are very mild mannered, very polite. You know, it's almost like their dad doesn't want any of their wear off on them. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Of course. Yeah. 